Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In today's episode, I want to show you how easily you can set up a component library slash a design system. So if you like stuff like chat CM, we're pretty much going to recreate that from scratch. And I'm going to kind of guide you through kind of the issues we might face, like merging class names and stuff like that. Come sit back, grab yourself a drink and brilliant. Looks like we have a sponsor. I wonder who it is. Who would have guessed it? It's Brilliant. Brilliant helps you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and even AI. I've been using it to sharpen my skills in areas like math and programming, and I appreciate how it challenges me with interactive problems rather than just like having to sit through an entire lecture. Now they added a bunch of new courses, but I actually highly recommend you check out the Visual Algebra one. Did you know JavaScript uses algebraic structures like monoids and monads? Probably not, so have a look at that. Uh, because it'll help you understand how functions get composed and how data also gets transformed. So if you want an easy and practical way to learn that fits into your busy schedule, check out Brilliant. They're offering a 30-day free trial along with 20% off your annual subscription. You can get that in the link in the description down below or optionally, you can also scan the QR code on the screen. Alrighty, let's get going. And as you can see, I'm using Tanstack Start here rather than Next.js. You can use anything. You can use React, you can use Vue, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I've just been really enjoying Tanstack Start. I'm not gonna lie. So I'm using this Create TS Router app. I initialize the project and I just add a tailwind. Now, before we continue here, when you're building a component library, you have to think first of all, well, what do I wanna use? Do I wanna just go with vanilla CSS? Do I want CSS modules, CSS and JS, Tailwind, blah, 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 right? There's so many options. There's nothing wrong with any of these options. The only reason I tend to prefer and go towards Tailwind is because you're halfway done. It gives you the design system. It's already there. If I'm starting a project with vanilla CSS, well, I'm gonna need to set up what? Breakpoints. I'm gonna need to set up text uh, sizes. I'm gonna need to set up colors, right? A bunch of different things that Tailwind already comes with. So that's why I use Tailwind. But let's start making our first UI component. So let's say we wanna make, let's do a button in our case, right? So you basically wanna have a button here. And let's say it says submit, right? There we go. Now what I wanna do is not have it like this, but instead having it kind of like Chad CN has it, right? With a big button like that. And then I can just apply maybe some default styles to it. And I can also modify the style slash UI slash button TSX. Let's make this. All right, let's export it. All right, so we got something like this, right? Return. And then here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the button here like that. Okay, so I'm gonna say submit. All right, and then we can head back here. Let's import this. And there we go. All right, but the problem is here now, if I pass down the text here, right, the text is already there is what I'm trying to say. If I hit save, we got the submit, but that's kind of not what you want to do, right? You want to add your own text here and hit save, and then it shows up. So there's two ways you could do that. You could either pass down children or the easier way, I think, is to do this instead. So I'm gonna say submit here again, or let's just change this to uh, buy now, okay? So we can go to the component. What I'm gonna do is go to the button here. I'm gonna get rid of the text. Again, you can pass down optionally children here like that for the text. But what I wanna do instead is I'm gonna make this a one single close tag like that. And instead I'm gonna import all the props. So all I'm doing here is I'm basically forwarding all the props all the way to this button here. So this is gonna spread all the children, the class names and everything else. Now to type the props for this, we can simply head over here and say, this is a type of React uh, component props essentially, right? So component props, and we can just pass in a generic to see which, which type of element it also is. So in our case, it's a button, right? So there we go, we got our type safety as well. So if we get back here, everything still seems to be working fine. So now this gives us the ability to just pass any props here and it will be automatically forwarded uh, to that inner button. So if I go here, Let's do M margin top of six, right? There we go. We can do padding Y of two, padding X of four with a BG blue of 600, something like that, right? And there we go. We'll do a text of white as well. 
But let's say I want to have some default stylings already applied to it. Let's say I want the text white, the borders, and maybe the padding to automatically be applied for us. So how can we get about that? Well, you might be thinking, well, let's just go to inside the button here and maybe we'll just add a class name like that. So we can do the PY2PX4 here with the BG blue. Let's say we add a gray as our default here, a 400 with a text of white. So something like that. If we hit save now, as you can see, nothing really is going to happen because when the props get passed here, it's essentially going to overwrite that. So as you can see, none of the styles apply here. Even if I do something like PI of 12, uh, nothing happens. So. This is where you get this like weird thing, like how do I combine these things together? So you essentially never really want to have two separate class names here that are kind of interfering with each other. So what's the solution? Well, it's one way you could get around this is to do something like this, where you can say maybe merge classes equals to, and then I'll do some backticks here, and I'll add my default ones here. So I can do PY of two, PX of four, with a BG gray of 600 as my default and text of white. So now we can simply head over here and I mean, this whole thing can pretty much get removed now. And instead I'll go here and after the props, I'll say class name is gonna be equal to the merged classes. All right, so now that we have our basic styling there, so now what we can do instead is head back to our index.ts. We're getting the class name in here. Let's remove most of these and instead just override maybe one value. So we'll do the BG blue of 600, all right? We'll keep that the way it was. Okay, so what we can do is head over here and besides the props here, I'm gonna kind of just extract the class names out of this on its own, all right? So the, the props here and now, everything that's spread is not gonna hold a class name that's gonna get passed through now. So instead, we can just simply head over here to the end and simply add the class name like that, right? And then I can simply insert the class name here. And let's give this a shot. If I go here and I do, let's do a margin top of 24 and hit save. As you can see, it gets pushed all the way down there. However, we still have a problem with this. Even the margin top 24 works, or if I do height of 20, of 52, right? Look at the button change there. However, my BG blue of 600 doesn't get shown here. So what's going on? The problem is that we're kind of passing two BG colors here, right? We're passing BG gray 600, and then we're also passing the color here. Now, even though the BG blue here is 600, it's after the BG gray 600, uh, it's, it's a conflict going on here. And you don't know exactly how this is going to resolve. So if you ever wonder what those packages like CS, LX, and TV Merge, and CN are all about, we're going to find out just now. And that's exactly what Tailwind Merge does. Uh, so we can import it like this if you install it by Tailwind Merge. And it essentially allows you to effectively find all these conflicts between the same type of class names and merge them into one and solve it for you. So I'm pretty much going to paste in everything that I had before. I'm going to add a comma here. And now I can simply just pass down the class name on its own like that. Okay, so let's get rid of this merge classes, hit save. And now we are going to see that this is correctly working now. I'm actually getting a blue button now. So there we go. We can head back here. If I remove the BG blue, we should automatically go on gray. So let's have a look and see if that works. And it does. So there we go. That's why you use TV merge. Now you might have seen something like this in Shatsy and instead where you have TV merge, but you also have something called CS, CLSX here. And what CLS, <laughs> that's so hard to say, CLSX allows you to do is essentially use kind of like this object syntax uh, to kind of conditionally render things. So if you don't need that, then you I wouldn't even recommend using this package, the CLSX. I'll show you now exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, so here, right, what we're doing, we have a string, right? And then we have our class name that we pass down here. So what CLSX allows you to do is essentially pass in an object here and do something like this, where you can say, hey, I want a height of 52 if this is true, for example, or I want a height of 12 
if whatever i'll put false here but you can have this like pass down in your props like hey is that true or is it on is it off you can do state management or whatever but if i hit save now as you can see that's gonna that's gonna change so if i go here and change that to false that's gonna be the same size now and if i change that to true that's gonna shift a little bit there. So you can conditionally render stuff like this super, super easily. So you'll need a CLX for that. But for me, I honestly don't even feel like you need this. You can simply head over here to the CN. I'm gonna change this back to TV merge. And if we try to save this, as you can see that breaks, we kind of do uh, just like object literals like this in here. So instead, honestly, you can get away just doing backticks here. So if I do backticks and do dollar sign true like that, right? I can do and, and, sorry, that needs to be in here. And, and, uh, H of 52, right? That works exactly the same way. Okay, but for now, let's just head over here and simply get rid of this and hit save. Okay, so we are kind of in a good shape right now. The next step, what we want is probably to have some sort of variance. So you should be able to go here to the button and say, hey, this is a type of variant. And when I type here as well, I kind of want to see, hey, variant. See, I'm not getting any autocomplete. And I also want to be able to see here what I can pick. So the default, is this like a primary button, a secondary? So how can we hook this up? Well, one way is to just do a simple prop, right? Where you can pass variants down like that. But the problem is that you're going to have so many different bits. You're going to have maybe a color field here. Uh, that's going to be a size field here as well that you need to pass down. And then you're going to need to import all of these here in props and kind of do kind of conditional rendering. So you're going to have the color, you're going to have uh, the size. And then in here, you're probably going to need to do stuff like, hey, well, if the bloody, you know, size color triple equals to this specific color, then render this out. And it just gets quite messy and quite complicated if you do it this way. And this is where that CFAC, <laughs> these bloody package days, I cannot name any of them right. So this is where a package like the class variance authority comes in really, really handy. And this is all that ChatCN uses as well. So we can just simply head back over to the command line. Let's close this up and install class variance authority. And let's run this back up. So now with this package installed, let's simply head back over to the button. And I'm gonna go here actually, maybe above here, and I'm just gonna make a new variable. And we're gonna call this button variance, like that. Set this equal to, we're gonna import this CVA package here. There we go, let's open this up. And as you can see, it says base there. So what I'm gonna do instead is pass the base styles here. There we go, and right after this, I'm gonna add a comma here and it's gonna say a config. So this is just gonna be an object that we're gonna open up here. And let's call this variant. You can give any name you want. I'm gonna make a variant. And let's make a couple. I'm gonna say default here. And this is gonna be a BG of, let's do that gray 600, right, that we had. Let's just keep it nice and simple for now, right? We don't want this to be having 20 different styles here. It's just the concepts that we're really interested in. So let's do destructive as well with a BG of red 600. And then you might have a primary as well, right? You might even have maybe a size or, or any other different style. So let's just make a new one here. I'm gonna say size for this. I'm gonna do a default again. I'm gonna do something ridiculous just so we can see this for fun. So there we go, this is pretty much it. I just did a variant and a size and set both of them here to default at the end as well. So one last thing that we need to do is kind of change all this up here. So we have the class name that comes true. We also are gonna have the variant now that comes true and the size as well that comes true. Okay, so we also need to kind of type these now as well. So we have the React component props, which is fine here. We can add an and symbol at the end. And what we'll need here is basically the variant props, which we can automatically import from the CVA package. So there we go, we got the variant props as well. And the type of here, we can simply say type of and pass down the button variant here, right? So it's all nicely typed now through this uh, JavaScript object here. Okay, now simply let's go down here and I'm gonna remove everything and we're gonna say TV merge and I'm gonna merge together. We're gonna do the button variants. Here we go, I'm gonna do parentheses and an object here. I'm gonna do the variant. I'm gonna pass down the class name and I'm also gonna pass down the size. 
There we go, and the TV merge here, I'm just gonna simply pass the button variants with the variant, the size, and the class name as well that gets passed through. And there we go, look at that. Would you look at that, we have a nice blue button. Let's see if this works, if we head back over to our index TSX. As you can see, we have the BG blue here. Let's just get rid of that and see if the basic styling applies now. Let's hit save, and it does. Do we have the auto complete as well? So we can select a variant here. And if we pass in, there we go, look at that, primary. There we go, we got that nice teal. We can also do a destructive if we want, and that works as well. Let's try the size. We can do a size, and we can have a look here. We can do a large maybe, and look at that. You have the worst looking button ever. But that's pretty much how you can get started and going uh, with kind of creating your own uh, UI library here. So that's all you need. You just need a merging class library and something like a CVA to kind of give you that nice uh, type safety and all to complete as well. Because you don't want to go here and then type something stupid and then it doesn't work. At least this like catches the error. As you can see, those are constant values. So you'll know about it if you are not getting this correct or wrong. Anyway, that's me blabbered enough. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Hope you enjoy this. Uh, let me know what you use for styling. I. I, I don't feel like I need to actually change anything. I've been, ever since I've been on Tailwind, I've been more than happy with it. Uh, you can just kind of take it in so many different ways, can't you? Okay, that will be all for me. Have a lovely day and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.